If you've been following me on Instagram, you may have seen some sneak peeks of my home office makeover. Well, today I'm going to share with you all the details of that transformation. Before I dive into this project, I wanted to share with you something new that I'm doing. I'm now offering free live webinars. They're one hour long interactive design sessions where I share more tips and ideas on how to make your home more beautiful and functional. So I hope you'll join me for my next one. You just have to go to engineeryourspace.com slash webinar and sign up. All right, now back to the project. One of the first things I had to do when I moved into my LA apartment was to figure out where to put my home office. It's a one bedroom apartment, so there's no room I can dedicate solely to my work. So I carved out a corner of my living room to use as my office. I didn't want it to be open to the living room, so I designed a dividing wall made from IKEA bookcases. The living room side looks like a wall with the decorative shelves adding to the visual separation, and the other side serves as storage for the office. The desk legs also did double duty as scratching posts for my cat Leah. I love how the dividing wall created a cozy office, but I never liked having my desk face the wall. I also was ready for a change in decor, so I kept my wall, but I took everything else out of the office for a fresh start. This time, I wanted the look of my office to reflect all aspects of the work that I do. From showcasing materials that I use all the time in my projects, like plywood, 2x4s, and metal, to also showcasing both sides of my design personality, my MacGyver, more industrial functional side, and the more traditional elegant side. Like for instance, I've always loved the look of wainscoting, but that involves a lot of woodwork and that's nailed and glued to the wall, which is not something that you really wanna do when you're renting. So I came up with my own version of wainscoting. It did involve painting the walls, which is not something I typically do because as a renter, I have to repaint my walls white before moving out. I did consider using temporary wallpaper instead, but that was outside my budget for this makeover. The taping process is my least favorite part of painting, but it's necessary for me to avoid making a mess on the ceiling and along the edges. I chose a pink color inspired by the wallpaper from the dividing wall. I considered using a darker color, but since that corner of my apartment doesn't get much light, I opted for a beautiful light shade of gray from Bayer called Graceful Gray. I wanted to keep the wainscoting portion of the wall very simple, so I chose to only cover the line where the colors meet with an inexpensive MDF molding that's typically used for baseboards. I also didn't want to glue and nail it to the wall, so I used screws to attach it in a few places where there are wall studs. I had to use two boards to cover the entire length of the wall, and the spackling I used to cover the joint cracked, probably because I didn't use construction adhesive. Using silicone instead worked a bit better at keeping the joints sealed since it's more flexible. It's still not perfect and there's some small gaps here and there, but overall I'm still very happy with how my idea turned out. I especially love how the new paint color accentuates that top portion of the dividing wall. Next I wanted to incorporate a hidden whiteboard. If you remember, when I lived in New York, um, I had found a way to use a whiteboard wall decal that I had hidden with a picture frame. But this time, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I came up with this idea to build a multi-purpose wall panel out of one by twos and quarter inch thick plywood that would allow me to incorporate a track for a barn door that could easily slide back and forth to cover up the whiteboard when I'm using it or not using it. It sits on legs, which holds the weight of the panel, and I carved out the back of the legs so that they can sit flush with the wall. The top of the panel is attached to the wall with brackets so that it can hold the weight of the barn door. I also had to make the barn door hardware because I couldn't find any that would work for this type of door. I found most of what I needed to make it at the hardware store. Since I was only working with hand tools, luckily making holes in metal is pretty easy. 
But a couple of things that help be more precise is making a divot first with a nail and then using a smaller drill bit and then working your way up to a larger size. It was important to be precise for this because the wheels have to be in the exact same spot on both sides of the door, otherwise it won't roll smoothly on the track. The next component I used were stainless steel straws, which I found on Amazon. They're perfect to make the little stoppers I needed for the track. Everything just came together even better than I could have imagined. The one thing I didn't like so much is that the door at the bottom swings back and forth. So to fix that, I put in a shelf at the bottom of the wall panel where I installed a track that I made out of metal angles. Problem solved. I love that when I'm done using the whiteboard, I can simply hide it by sliding the door. Really easy. I might whitewash the plywood, but for now, I like the look of the raw wood. It goes really well with my office chair, which I wanted to keep because it's really comfortable. One thing I definitely wanted to change, though, was the position of my desk. I really wanted it to face the window this time. But this office is extremely narrow, so there was not a lot of room to work with to have a desk as big as what I wanted. So that's when I came up with the idea of attaching the desk to the bookcase. And by doing that, it just allows me to extend my work surface all the way onto the shelf here. I made the desk from plywood and 2x4s left over from another project. I would typically finish the edges of plywood with iron-on wood veneer. But this time I was inspired by the barn door track to use metal instead. The metal bar I use is very thin, so it was fairly easy to cut with a hacksaw. I didn't have construction adhesive to attach it to the plywood, so I drilled holes into it so that I could attach it with nails instead. I could have left it like that, but then I saw these faux gold gems at the craft store that I thought would be perfect to hide the nail heads. They were just a bit too shiny for me, so I gave them a more antique look with some matte Mod Podge and brown wax. They already had glue on the back, so it was very easy to put them on. I love the combination of the wood and all the different metal finishes. The only thing that's missing is sisal rope on the desk legs to make a scratching post. I'm thinking I better get to that very soon. The last finishing touch was installing a new pendant lamp. Drilling into the ceiling can get pretty messy, but the plastic lid I used did a good job of catching the dust. Speaking of which, if you live in an older building, you don't want to be drilling into your ceiling unless you're sure it doesn't have any asbestos. Luckily, my landlord confirmed that there's no asbestos in my ceiling. The pendant lamp I chose is very light, so I only needed a small anchor for the hook. This lamp is meant to be hardwired, so I did have to switch out the pendant lamp kit that came with the lamp for one that you can plug in. It's such a beautiful lamp. I love the curves and how it makes a statement, yet doesn't feel too imposing. I tried a couple of different types of light bulbs to see the effect it would have. This Edison bulb cast a really fun pattern on the ceiling and wall that actually mimics the wallpaper, which I hadn't expected. In the end though, I decided to go back to the smart LED light bulb I initially used. I like that I can dim them and even change the color temperature all from my phone. Makes it easy to set the mood to whatever I want. The dividing wall pretty much stayed the same, except that I flipped over the double-sided picture frame. It's something I had to make when I just couldn't find a frame that I could hang that would look good from both the office and the living room. The size of my office hasn't changed. It's still a tiny six feet by five feet, but this new layout makes the entire office seem twice as big because now the space in front of me also is part of my office, whereas before it was just confined between the wall and the bookcase. The wall treatment, I feel, also adds that sense of this entire space being the room instead of just a small corner. It all blends in with the living room seamlessly and adds that touch of elegance that was missing before. The space now feels very comfortable with everything customized to exactly what I need. From a built-in footrest that's just the right height for me to having a whiteboard that I can use without having to get out of my chair. 
Facing the window also feels so much nicer than facing the wall. But now that I'm looking at that corner of my apartment a lot more, I think it's going to need its own makeover. So stay tuned for that very soon. I'll add links in the description below to the products that I used in this makeover. Also, don't forget to sign up for my next webinar by going to engineeryourspace.com slash webinar. I hope to see you at the next one. And in the meantime, follow me on Instagram to see what I'm up to. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.